Rosanna Panasino is one of the best examples of menopausal hysteria and female narcissism that you could ever find in the entertainment industry. Just another woman who in the midst of her midlife crisis delirium had the epiphany that her impact on the world until now has been ultimately negligible and intangible in the grand scheme of things. The legacy she will leave behind is a YouTube channel about making cake pops that died 10 years ago that has 15 million Pakistani burner accounts subscribed to it that literally no one has ever heard of. No living, breathing human being has ever heard of this woman in their life. Throughout the years of being a childless aging woman, the most notable thing she has ever been involved in is being featured in a Mr. Beast video from two years ago about playing hide and seek, where she didn't even win. And I guess in order to take action and preserve her legacy so she can leave this world feeling like her existence wasn't totally meaningless, because it is, she went to Twitter and went on a tirade about Mr. Beast robbing her of the third place position in this children's game on this children's YouTube channel. She plays it off like her main gripe with the situation was with Mr. Beast's dishonest editing of the video and how the final product intentionally misrepresented the positions of the runner-up contestants. After she found out that her precious third place position was replaced by Logan Paul, she was shocked! disappointed and hurt. But apparently she didn't feel hurt enough to have mentioned this two years ago when it happened, when it wouldn't have caused as much drama and could have been resolved a lot more easily. I think Mr. Beast was just a catalyst for this woman's menopausal episode. And her sudden fixation on this incident out of nowhere is completely arbitrary. Hypothetically, if Mr. Beast had nothing to do with her life whatsoever, she still would have found a way to take out her feminine wrath on someone or something else. She's convinced herself that Mr. Beast was supposed to have some loyalty to being 100% authentic and real with every detail of his videos, and him excluding her from a portion of the final cut was him being unfaithful to the standard that he was apparently supposed to be upholding. I don't think anyone past the age of 11 is upset after finding out Mr. Beast's videos aren't 100% genuine. It shouldn't shock, disappoint, and hurt you as an adult to learn that reality TV shows alter events and details in order to tell a more entertaining story. I think the fact that this woman even had the opportunity to appear in a Mr. Beast video as a content creator is such a blessing that it totally negates any right she has to complain about the outcome of the video at all. Instead, she had to have a meltdown about it on Twitter years later, saying the only reason Mr. Beast excluded her from a portion of the video was because him and his team are sexist and go so far as to call anyone who criticizes her behavior sexist as well. Since she was the only female out of the top three people, then it could only be concluded that the singular reason he had for leaving her out of the final cut was because of his gender prejudice and had nothing to do whatsoever with the fact that she just wasn't entertaining. This claim doesn't even have any grounds to stand on, since she was actually one of the TWO people left out of the top three in the final cut. The other one being male. Oh, so I was, I was in, I ended up being in third place. I ended up being in third place because they found me, but Lorray was in that video and Lorray was asleep. So I was technically second place. So I was, I was the second place in that video. Who knows, maybe it's because Mr. Beast is not only sexist, but he also doesn't tolerate homosexuals either. This guy looks pretty gay to me. This guy looks like a fat. I, I really doubt this is the case though, because he looks really happy to have post-transition Chris Tyson as a member of his crew. He just looks so happy whenever he's streaming with him and filming with him. Her she says there's no selfish intentions behind her outrage, and it's not about her at all. It has nothing to do with her. Because she also feels sympathy for the gay twink f 
being left out as well. But it really seems like she was trying to make everything about her. The moment she alluded to sexism, and that Mr. Beast was only targeting her because of his vagina hatred. And again, also accuses anyone who notices her unhinged behavior of being a sexist. Because the only reason anyone could ever have for criticizing a woman is because of their sexist sentiment. She insinuates that Mr. Beast's decision to leave her out could have potentially affected her imaginary prize money that she never got, that she would have given to her community, which makes absolutely no sense. Because the only person in the competition who received a prize at all was the first place contestant. Again, her and the gay dude didn't place first, so no matter if they're included in the lineup or not, it wouldn't have affected their prize money because they never would have gotten any. I really have no idea why she would mention this or what her logic was behind this. She says that the same and worse has been done to other content creators who've been featured in Mr. Beast videos, apparently. I guess she's talking about the allegations where Mr. Beast was being mean to his employees or inconsiderate towards his contestants or something. For the past few years of his reign on YouTube, people have been trying to find pretty much any way they can to tarnish his brand and character assassinate him. Even if he was a big meanie to his employees and had superficial optics, I could honestly care less. You cannot get that far in any industry in the world without being a bit of a hard ass and not being 100% transparent all the time, let alone the content creation industry. Not a single one of these will ever even come close to producing something a fraction of the value and scale that Mr. Beast has been putting out consistently for years. Barely anyone on YouTube today could handle the stress and responsibility and workload that Mr. Beast has, or maintain the determination that he has, or possess the creative prowess that he has. And these people that happened to work with him that later left and about it online were just a few of the many people that definitely could not handle it. You know, when I was working for the number Number one content creator of all time. He was such a hard ass and the workload and schedule was so overwhelming. Yeah, no sh retard. What did you think you were signing up for? How do you think people like that get there? She thinks her experience is being validated by receiving a bunch of anonymous DMs of stories from other random people. Yes, it's totally unheard of for random people to tell fake stories about a creator that's currently under fire just so they can get clout or assist in their character assassination because they don't like them. I'm really waiting for the point where someone just outright claims that Mr. Beast them. In fact, she releases another official statement where she tries as hard as humanly possible to make it sound like she was by saying buzzwords commonly used by Me Too victims. And it's very obvious, and everyone can see exactly what she's doing. She uses phrases like my story, speaking up about their experiences, thank you for all the empowering support and specifically mentioning that these stories are coming from female creators. Why is she doing this exactly? I don't even know if women like her are this shamelessly manipulative on purpose or if this is just the behavior that comes naturally to them. She's trying to make whatever retarded woman reading this tap into their me too mode in their brain by using dog whistles and buzzwords and talking exactly like a victim. So hopefully they'll be more charitable to her hysterical meltdown and actually sympathize with her. Ironically enough, she says Keemstar is downplaying the Me Too movement by making that connection to the way she was talking about the drama. But if anyone is downplaying Me Too victims, it's obviously her. I think she knows exactly what she's doing. Mr. Beast then contacts her and tries to have a cordial and productive conversation and resolve the issue like adults would. You know, that should have been the very first thing on your mind if you actually wanted to solve a problem like this. Just contact the person who you felt wronged you and go over different ways that you could fix the issue until you come to a satisfactory conclusion. Instead, you thought it would be best to make a sudden and arbitrary outcry about it years later to manufacture drama. And yet she tells him that her intention was not at all malicious or to cause drama. Yeah, right. She says this has been causing her mental stress and anguish. Not appearing to an audience of children with her best performance in Hide and Seek. Listen, I'm pretty certain it's not the Mr. Beast Hide and Seek episode from two years ago that is currently causing you mental stress and anguish. 
Again, I think that's just called being menopausal. She goes on a rant about the nuances of how she was edited out of the video, like she's reliving a traumatic memory that's been ingrained in her mind, and goes on about how her position as third place in hide and seek really improved her confidence and self-esteem, which just wasn't there before. I think it's pretty obvious to anyone that she has major confidence issues and is very insecure, which explains why she's acting so irrational and cares way too much about this. She's really putting out some textbook pathology for display here. Just classic narcissism and inferiority complex. It's funny because she swears that there's absolutely no ulterior motive behind any of this, and that she just doesn't care because she's getting older and she's the happiest she's ever been. In reality, I think the fact that she's getting older has made her care way too much about this, and she's actually the unhappiest she's ever been, because her fried eggs and whacked out menopause hormones are turning her into an insecure psychopath. Still, Mr. Beast remains pragmatic and collected. Just a normal, healthy adult who isn't acting like a neurotic, unhinged lunatic. I'm loving his one sentence versus her one paragraph messaging dynamic as well. She refuses to get on a call with him to iron things out, and then she demands that he send her all the raw footage from that episode, and then ghost him completely. As I said, textbook narcissism. She doesn't actually realize how inconsiderate and unrealistic she's being. How much of a pain in the ass it would actually be to recover this raw footage and send it to her and her team so he can review it with her in person and negotiate over something that is ultimately meaningless and a waste of time for him. <coughs> the dude is probably one of the busiest men on earth and it would probably cost him more money and wasted time dealing with her woman bull that he actually gave away in that hide and seek video. And then she had the audacity to tweet that Mr. Beast went radio silent and refuses to communicate with her. Again, I don't think she realizes how ridiculous of a demand it is to ask someone to search through their archive to find specific cuts of one video they shot years ago just because you have an issue with some pointless trivial detail that doesn't affect anyone since you have a crippling self-esteem and a fragile ego. Or maybe she does realize how unrealistic of a demand that is and fully expected Mr. Beast to just ignore her after being asked something so retarded. So then she could go on Twitter and tell everyone he refuses to communicate to make him look like the villain as a manipulation tactic. In order to spread her spiteful old woman energy to as many people as she can, she went on this press tour to be interviewed on multiple podcasts to manipulate optics in her favor and further popularize the drama. Gives away these cars, he really gives away all this money. It's real, it's real, it's real. It wasn't real, I was top three and he edited it to be all men. The most notable being the H3H3 podcast featuring Pokimane, where they were nothing but supportive of her and her cause, as you would expect. Another question that I got was, well, why didn't you reach out to him privately? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you reach out and and I agree that in a competition like that, for you to get to third against other men is like such a fun achievement that you were probably so proud of that it really sucks that they took that out of the result, you know, for, for people to see. You're, you're feeling some misogyny that's, that's affecting, continues to affect your uh, relationships with uh, working with people in general, not just Jimmy, but in general. I don't think that's fair. Everybody's feelings are valid, especially in regards to gendered issues, because these are things that we deal with over years and years and years and years of time. And when your trauma tank is filled the f up, when little things can then make a pew, splash. I don't know how you know whatever. Getting That's a million dollars say. is not a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't yeah. understand how giving a million dollars to your community in any way that you want to is not a big deal. That yeah. is a big deal. And a 26 a hour shoot? Yeah. Non stop? Yeah, exactly. That's That's crazy. Crazy. Their audience of terminally online middle aged women are the perfect target demographic for this drama and are exactly the type of people you'd expect to actually sympathize with her in her character assassination campaign. And days later, for some reason, Ethan Klein really seemed to have it out for Mr. Beast and would nitpick anything he said in these clips that were sent to him on stream. Like, I just need a partner who loves learning, you know, and just wants to improve. Like, 
for us now, like an idea of a date is just to like take an IQ test and then study and see if we can get a higher. Oh, come on, bro. Ain't no way, This bro. so far is giving me all the wrong vibes. Like, <laughs> oh my God. This man just said they go on a, their date is an IQ test. I bro, feel like will... he seems very judgmental already. By the way, he created this list. Like she needs to want to learn and do stuff because otherwise she's <laughs> lazy or something. I think he's a little socially, uh, inept. I don't think he really understands how to talk to women at all. And so like, this, I love it. And I love watching documentaries. And also, this man has his feet up on someone else's podcast. That's part of my problem. Like the whole body language is not giving me like any self-awareness of like, I'm not perfect, but I will. Hold on. Don't you think that's a little weird to put your feet up at someone else's podcast? Like he doesn't have his feet up. I don't know. Maybe he did at some point. I'm like, we'll go by. Why has he got a laptop? <laughs> I don't think he really knows what he's saying. It almost makes me think that this drama is validating some pre-existing grudge Ethan has towards Mr. Beast. I guess they came to some sort of understanding as she later apologized to Mr. Beast formally through a tweet, saying that maybe it was a better idea all along to have expressed her feelings and concerns privately and handled things with him one-on-one. -on -one. Who would have known? She has also deleted all of her psychotic hormone posting, but only really because she's been getting thousands of death threats and not because she's actually regretful of her behavior or anything. She just had to make the apology disingenuous in some way. She couldn't just fully own up to her actions and at least have some humility. She had to remind you in some way that she's still the real victim here and to still have pity for her. She is the embodiment of eternal victimhood. This settlement of beef between her and Mr. Beast was pretty short-lived though, as she has since retracted her apology after learning that he isn't solving every single one of her problems exactly the way she wants him to. I think we're just witnessing the emotional volatility of this woman during her menopausal hormone fluctuations, and I guess when she initially apologized, her roller coaster of moody temperament reached its base level and she calmed down at the time. But now since she's back on the roller coaster, her, and her mania cycle is reaching its climax over the hill. She's back for round two and ready to revive the drama and be a spiteful bitch again only days later. I can't really see this pointless battle that she's trying to wage with this poor dude ending anytime soon. Maybe when one of them dies. Otherwise, she's just gonna keep on going on and on, waging this war forever and ever. Anyways, like and subscribe, join the Discord, leave a mean comment. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I literally, I'm calling him a gay twink f because I, I don't want to say his stupid f name that badly. Quackity. Quackity. My name's Quackity.